And uh, yeah, here we are on Hybrid's channel again. So um, I'll let you intro this and then I'll, uh, I'll do my thing. <laughs> All right, yeah, so this is number one Aquaman. And basically, Armin's gonna, because he's the Aquaman guy, I don't know if anyone knows this, but I feel he's probably the only comic book reader that will exclusively, like, defend Aquaman to his death. Uh, so. yeah. Man, when people come to my house and they look at my wall and they go, are you joking? Is that an Aqu uh, Aquaman shrine? I'm like, no, no, no. That's a bunch of Aquaman toys on my shelves. <laughs> uh so, so yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, a lot of people kind of, um, they haven't really, from what I understand, they haven't gotten a hold of, you know, what makes Aquaman great. And um, I'm going to give that, attribute that to pretty much um, the way he's been written up until may, pretty much the last, like, five years. Uh, like, you know, Batman was never a serious character until, you know, Tim Burton rolled around and finally, you know, and, the, you know, Frank Miller and everybody, they, you know, they took that campy image, you yeah. know, that Adam West established. That's what I feel Aquaman's been needing. And they've kind of done it, but, like, his origin, you know, hasn't really been fleshed out in the New 52, which is kind of a problem since he's been such a major character in there. Yeah. Um, The way I felt they should do it is, uh, like, they've done a good job establishing that, you know, he he doesn't like anybody and he's powerful, but they haven't really done anything. Like, um, and one thing, like, they always mention is, like, his powers are, you know, magical-based, which which makes sense. You know, he, he is yes. able to take down Superman. He is able to... Okay. You know, he's able to keep up with the best of them, but, like, people automatically go to the, you know, the water factor and how long could he survive. Well, it's yeah. been established, like, most, you know, are going to survive four to five days without water, you know, without dying. And there was one pathway where they mentioned it's like this guy can go about three weeks without a drop of water without losing any single power before, you know, he deteriorates to anything. So right there, you know, he can automatically outlast. But um, looking at just like his origin, it's... Since it's not really fleshed out, like, they show him taking bullets to the chest, but, you know, they don't mention why. And you ha really have to think about, like, he's at the bottom of the ocean, where, you know, the depths of the ocean are literally just crushing on him. Which, you know, builds up the resistance to his skin, which is why he's bulletproof. So, I, I think they should feel, like, go more into the origin of Atlantis for him. And, like, why the city can withstand it. And, like, the idea I had w was to make him more, um supernatural like uh, or maybe even extraterrestrial like have you ever seen um ancient aliens yeah, <laughs> uh, like, yeah that, that. that would be my take what if like atlantis was like one of the earliest colonies of these ancient aliens that you know put it there and then they abandoned it and they thought they you know destroyed it but a few of these you know proto humans that they built on in water survived and you know that's where the atlanteans came from they thrived which would, you know, over thousands and millions of years, you know, develop this natural resistance to water and these crazy depths. And Atlantis was sank as, like, you know, a part of this aliens don't want anything to do with, you know, with anything. Like, you know, the aliens destroy Krypton, the Martians on Mars. It's like, what if they tried to do the same thing on Earth and we were, you know, a failed experiment? And I That'd think that, cool. you know, that would be a good way to kind of base him into a more supernatural uh you know down the road it's like he can you know eventually face these aliens you know to try to do something to him and you know there's such grotesque things at the bottom of the ocean why you know you really have to explore that which i, I feel like they haven't done anything it's like they show him it's like okay he has sharks but you know what else is there we don't even know what you know what else is down there you know the prehistoric things that they talk talk about constantly the fossils we're finding and even you know, fish that, you know, we find modern day that have survived all these, you know, millions of years that we thought were extinct. I would definitely take, you know, that more realistic approach and be like, well, you know, Atlanteans thrived and they finally, you know, why are they revealing themselves to us? Oh, well, you know, we're, we're pretty much destroying their, their water. They were here first. And like, I would use that, you know, fire up Arthur Curry, you know, Aquaman as uh, not exactly a hero. I would base him more as a villain type character. Just because, like, as a hero, you really, like, he will attack, you know, he will attack Superman or Batman at, you know, if he has to. Like, he's not going to hold back against these guys, which that really speaks to his character. It's like, you know, he wants to protect his people, even though they, you know, they treat him like crap just because he's different than them. You know, he's half human, half Atlantean. Yeah. Um, and I would definitely dive deep into the, um, you know, he's... His mom, uh, you know, she was, you know, either his mom or his dad, Atlantean. I would try to change that up just because, like, in the New 52, they established him as this badass character who 
you know, he just goes in there and can wreck stuff, but there's no reason to why he's doing it. And they're kind of trying to flesh it out, but, you know, nothing has really been done too much with it. And, like, um, also his wife, you know, I would tie her deep into the origin of his story. Like, um, I wouldn't just say, oh, you know, his wife Mara, here she is, and um, she can control and bend water. It's like, yeah, I would attribute that to her being, like, a... Uh, the reason he can't do that himself is because he is half human and the Atlanteans can, which would be another, you know, another reason he is also looked down upon and has so much hatred towards Atlanteans and humanity because, you know, like no one takes him seriously yet. He, by, by, you know, by all rights, he is the king of Atlantis, you know, one of the oldest civilizations on earth. Yes. So, you know, it's like you mentioned that it's like, okay, this guy's been around, you know, his kingdom has been around before humans ever settled on earth. And then suddenly, you know, humans take over and they're like, oh, okay, this is all ours. Uh, here, let us dump trash in your oceans. It's like, I, you know, I wouldn't let that escape. You know, would you let someone bring trash to your home? <laughs> yeah. It's like you dump it all over your floor and be like, all right, later, I'll be back with another load. So I would definitely play up that whole aspect. Um, And then Black Manta, who I think is like a very important character in the Aquaman mythos, you know, he's he is his, you know, he is the version of the Joker that is, you know, to Batman. He is the the main guy you want to put in there and i would point that up as a uh, more you know a racist type of angle because you know black manta he was one of the first in the dc comics he was one of the first african-american villains to like be prominently shown back when aquaman was you know first conceived and like especially during the whole you know martin luther king movement and stuff it just was kind of unheard of and i would actually play that aspect up versus aquaman being like you know he wants you know, he has never had a problem with this guy, but, you know, Black Manta is such a terrible character. Like, he just wants to destroy everything. I would play up the whole racist card versus Aqua. I mean, like, he doesn't like him because he's different. It's like, hey, not too long ago, you know, your people were the same, you know, way to the, you know, the land dwellers. I, like, I would yeah. really try to entwine everything in a real world feel, which I feel like that's the one thing they're really trying to do right now is do a more real world thing with um, Aquaman, which is why they haven't done too much underwater which uh, you know I, I attest that to them because like it's been so well done like um in the new 52 there was a comic where he's kind of like lost in the desert you know they're making jokes about it and he's just like yeah i really don't really need your help but okay you know and he kind of just shows them you know he doesn't need any of this so i would definitely go a more streamlined ancient you know atlantis type of mythical thing um i wouldn't try to flesh it out too much at the offset because you want to keep some of that mystery you know it's like i think that's like one of the few things that makes superman so great is that they establish his origin but they always don't tell you everything so they can go back to that point and add to it you know if needed you know whatever yeah. happened on krypton and things like that um also like bruce wayne we know his origin because you know that's what establishes his character and it's like that's cool but like Characters like Aquaman and Martian Manhunter, they can always add, you know, more to it, which that's definitely the way I would go, you know, just more grounded in reality, use the whole ancient aliens thing, because, God, that's so popular amongst people these days. You know, everywhere you turn, there's always something about it. Someone's writing a book or something about it. You know, Atlantis has been, throughout history, it's been mentioned numerous times. And, you know, me being such a huge history buff and going, you know, getting a few history degrees here, I would definitely just that's the way you take it because you really can't base them on just like an everyday situation where it's like, Oh, here's Aquaman. Here's Atlantis. Oh, here you go. Throw it out there because just people won't grasp onto that. When you give them, you know, nothing to work off of, you have to base it on real world knowledge, which people tend to know these days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I would definitely, you know, head for a more villainous type of role for Aquaman and just, um, you know, make them, Make him fight for, you know, what's his. Um, And the idea I have is, like, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the show Entourage. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, on that, they did a whole thing or, you know, a one season one based about them and James Cameron trying to make an Aquaman movie. And, like, there's this one pivotal scene where the main character, you know, they show a clip from it and he's, like, running towards the ocean. This giant tidal wave starts, starts coming. It's, like, that's what they have to focus on and his, his insane amount of power. Like, you put him in water, this guy's going to pretty much sink New York and matter of seconds yeah, he You're, does have a lot of power right like i mean there's been times where it's like oh a building starts falling due to something and he literally just holds up a building with like you know one hand it's like oh god 
you know, it's like you have to play up that this guy, if you mess with him, he will, you know, he will go after you and uh, he can easily overpower you. Like, so that's definitely the way I would take it. More realistic, but you have to overpower him because that's what he has to be. But then, you know, he does have weaknesses, which is going to come to, you know, exploiting those in a good way, which... Th- just give it to Jeff Johns because that guy in DC seems to be as long as he's writing Aquaman, it seems to be fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my take on it. All right, well I have three like quick questions. Um, first one being, would you make him kind of like since you mentioned the whole environment thing with, I guess throwing garbage into the ocean. Right. Would you make him kind of like how Ultimate Thor was in the beginning, where he was like a super environmentalist? Uh, yeah, that's definitely I, I, the take I would take on it. I mean, um, you know, it's like people always say, you know, oh, Aquaman, he talks to fish. He doesn't actually talk to him. He can't talk to them. What he does is um, his telepathic powers extend inside their brain, and he kind of, like, pushes different parts of their brain to, to will them to do what he wants. Like persuasion. Right, exactly. So th- that's definitely the angle I would take. You know, it's like, oh, these, you know – what would you do if you wake up one day and you know, oh, 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 why are all these dolphins suddenly dying? Oh, wait, someone's doing this to them. You know, he telepathically senses that. So I would definitely do the environmentalist thing. That's, I think that's, you know, important to the core of the character. Okay. And my second question is, would you include Aqu- Aqualad in there? Because you mentioned Mira. Right. Uh, which Aqualad would you go with? Man, um, if I was to, um, I would go with the original Tempest first. Yeah. Just to establish, uh, you know, a, uh, a core setting, you know, Aquaman, and I would make, you know, of course, his son and things like that. Um, and eventually, I would probably spin it off to, um, the, you know, the more popular one recently from Young Justice, and uh, of course, the whole Black Manta thing, which I think they did a really phenomenal job. Um, I would definitely spin that straight into the comics because that story arc has been so, you know, prominent in the Young Justice season two. I would definitely just toss that whole thing, like pretty much exactly how they've done it. I wouldn't change anything about that. <laughs> All right. And my last kind of question thing is, or you mentioned taking a more villainous role with it, but would he be more of an anti-hero in that sense or more of just someone who's like, you know what, you're messing with my people, my ocean, my kingdom, etc. So I'm going to deal with it. Yeah, I, I would pretty much uh, do that. And, um, that I would attribute more to... um. That's what they did in Marvel with Namor, and I yeah. think it's really worked out great for him. You know, Norm, Namor is just like, all right, the X Men aren't gonna do anything, Avengers aren't gonna do anything, Fantastic Four aren't gonna do anything. Well, I'm gonna call down Imperius Rex and I'm gonna take care of you know stuff by myself, and uh, that's definitely the way I would go. Like at heart, he's clearly you know a hero, but um, you know, just don't push him overboard. That's, I guess that's the way uh, you go with the character. You know, it's you really have to do that whole um you know what what's the situation of you know what's going on and that's where you spin off from there because obviously it's like he wants to protect humanity because you know they're also his people and uh but you know there's also bad to them and um you definitely got to add the whole mermaids and uh you know ancient creatures and things like that the more fantastic like i know i've seen people say just bring in cthulhu sure good, good <laughs> enough bring in cthulhu i don't care you know do whatever you want because Hey, we don't know what's under the water, so... <laughs> yeah, true. I like how you mentioned that, actually, because they don't usually go into the fact that there are various undiscovered uh, life forms deep underground or right. deep under the ocean and stuff. Right, that's exactly so. like, you know, they did that with Namor. It's like, oh, Imperius Rex, he's just, like, T-Rex-looking ancient creature that we thought was wiped out. It's like, yeah, do that with Aquaman, you know? Why Why not give him something that's like, you know, an ancient plesiosaur type of Loch Ness monster or something badass, you know, that he can just call down upon you know you you have the whole ocean which is i believe i read a stat that was like 85 percent of our ocean is you know unexplored we have no idea what's down there all right then you pull from that you know you can pretty much make up anything you want just like you can we you know with aliens or superman it's like oh we need new aliens for superman to battle make up anything you can think of <laughs> yeah i'm sick of them really giving him guppies yeah <laughs> also i'm really I really do like your kind of interpretation of the character and how you do it because I think I mentioned this in one of my Justice League reviews, but I don't like how for such a powerful character, they treat him as a not powerful character. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's the main part I don't understand about why 
they've written him like that so far. Up until literally this new 52 run of Aquaman, he's literally just been such a powerful character, but they always keep him in nothing. It's like, if you got, like, he, his properties are magic. There has been times where he will literally just hold up his hand and, you know, he can literally suck the water out of anything. And humans are mostly water. Like, yeah. he can literally just willingly look at you and, like, cripple you down into a pile of ash. Essentially, like, your skin and bone is just sitting there because he has used all the moisture out of your body. It's like, why don't you, you know, play up that fact that he is so powerful that you, you don't even want to call up this guy because he's a loose cannon, you know? He, he's, he's so crazy. And, he, I mean, he is a crazy character. I mean, especially if you're going to tie in all the previous stuff that happened to him before the New 52, like, losing his son and... You know, getting yeah. his arm removed and all that, and Dying. God knows they've done so much with him. <laughs> yeah, I honestly am just like I don't know. Honestly, I mentioned. Well, actually, I didn't mention this. This was actually shown in one of the New Fifty Two Justice League things. I don't remember what issue number though, but they showed him lifting up a boat, and not just any boat, but like a cruise ship boat. So, oh, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, the guy's not weak in any sense. Yeah, and um, I think he also has the same problem as Superman. Um, depending on who's writing him, they um, they will mess up his powers and they tend to bow unbalance themselves. Like um, there are you know certain things in Superman where he's like, oh, I can push a planet, and then other times he's like struggling to stop an airplane, you know. And I'm like, wait, yeah. what? And I, I I think Aquaman comes under the same um problem right there. It's like. Certain writers write him as so powerful, like he's unstoppable. Then the next writer takes him, and he gets punched in the face by Al Jordan, and he's like bleeding and dying. I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense because he could he can resist like eighty thousand tons, an inch, you know, pushing down on him at the bottom of the you know the deepest part of the water and a volcano pretty much hitting him in the face. But then Green Lantern hits him with like a flick, and he's bleeding. Uh, it just doesn't make sense, you know, from comic to comic. So I think they should like write some sort of holy Bible. And just be like, here's his powers and here's his resistance. Work with exactly. this. You know? That's what I do. <laughs> That's why for comic book verses, we went by stats only. Because if you go by feats they've done throughout their history, those are different writers' right. interpretations. So see, that's where um our actually I that's why I'm excited you guys are doing your verses and we're doing our verses. Because we threw in everything with ours. So when we mentioned Batman, it's like, oh, what if Batman had his robotic back? Sure enough, <laughs> here you go. So <laughs> But, um, yeah, so that's my take on Aquaman. I would spin it real world, ancient aliens, type it on, pull off on everything you can from the ocean's depths. Everything. <laughs> so no magic? Uh, I With would say, Neptune and stuff? Uh, I would say if you really want to, say that, you know, that was in like, you know, maybe tied in there. But I would still definitely stick to that real world alien feel to them, like, you know, bottom of the ocean type of thing. So I would tie Neptune into it, but not so much magic that he can, you know go in there and kill everybody <laughs> but make them hang with the you know the best of them so okay. yeah <laughs> so kind of like a magical feel to him like one woman has but not so directly I guess. Ex exactly yeah right. because once you tie in magic to how already powerful and um yeah. you know strong was... he is i think he just oh, he, he turns it pretty much into marvel century where anytime <laughs> century shows up you're just like well this character is completely boring <laughs> Yeah, funny you mention him. He's going to be in our comic book verses, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, um, so there we go. That's my uh, take on Aquaman. Sweet. All right.